All right, looks like we've got a healthy amount of people, so let's go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. That was way better of a response than I was expecting. You're all wonderful. <laughs> You're wonderful. Ah, oh, thanks. Uh, my, name, my name is Elliot Rapp. Uh, I'm a little too judged from uh, about 45 minutes away from here in Boston, Massachusetts, and I'm also one of the Greater Boston Area co-representatives, along with our wonderful conference organizer, Mr. Brian Hare. Please, please thank him profusely. He's been so stressed out over this thing. It's insane. Everyone, this whole conference has been great. Cheers. If you want the organizers, please be sure. Uh, anyway, this is uh, the lesson plan method. Uh, which is a comprehensive guide to goal setting and achievement that I've been developing over the past few months. Um, as the name suggests, because I'm very imaginative, uh, this, <laughs> this uh, method is stolen uh, straight from the world of education. Uh, I, I have an education degree, and when I was thinking of new ways to, uh, to really plan out and achieve goals in this field, I went to this outline which I've adapted for the judging world. I'm gonna pass this around so y'all can follow along. It's gonna be, we're gonna be doing a bit of interactivity during this. Should be enough for everyone. So the first thing that we have to come up with when we're thinking about goal setting and achievement is of course the goal. Uh, in, uh, you may have heard the term SMART goal before. Has anyone not heard that term? Yes, no, heard the term of SMART goal. All right. So SMART in this sense, uh, I spell mine S-M-A-R-R-T, which is the exact opposite of how Homer Simpson spells it. And, uh, so so this, this stands for specific, measurable, <coughs> achievable, relevant, realistic, and timely, or time-bound if you prefer. Uh, so this is what we want uh, in our goal, in our aim, which is the first uh, first thing that you'll see at the top of your sheet. Uh, something that we're going to be doing over the course of, uh, of, of this seminar is we're actually going to be filling this out together. We're going to set a goal, a hypothetical goal, and we're going to go through how you might go about achieving it. You don't have to use this sheet for that, but it's a good example. And this uh, outline, as well as the PowerPoint presentation, is available online and will be emailed to you after the seminar. All right. So, the lesson plan method. Uh, this I found through my trial and error in developing this that it's most effectively used on longer term goals. Uh, it's most effectively used where you can say, uh, say you're an L1 and you're looking to advance. I want to be an L2 in six months. That, that's an example of a SMART goal because it sets out exactly what we're doing. It's measurable, which means it's something that we can actually achieve, which is the next one. It's relevant to your goals. Obviously that one, it's, that one's more or less self-explanatory in all the things we do, but we still want to make sure it's there. It's realistic. And it's time, it's time bound. Notice at the end of that, I added in six months. We want this, you want a time bound goal so that you have something to be consistently working towards. So the lesson plan method breaks down not only what this goal is, but how to accomplish it. So it doesn't have to be over the course of one day, it doesn't have to be over the course of one event, but you want it to have a time structure so you can hold yourself to this goal. And again, this pro uh, so this process works best if you take notes throughout your goal. I found that a lot of times if I set a goal, say like, I don't know, I want to uh, write X reviews by the end of the year. So I, I have a record of that, right? I can go to Judge Center and I can look at the number of reviews I've written and I, can, I have a visual representation of what it is. But that's something that involves me having to go to Judge Center, log in, do all this stuff. It's not necessarily the best way for me to keep track of my specific <coughs> Say I have, uh, say, a handy dandy document like this one, I don't know, <laughs> and I can go and reference this sheet and say, hey, okay, this is how far I've done. This is how I'm going to achieve my goal. I'm going to contact these judges ahead of time, let them know that this is my goal, that I'm working towards something. Or, uh, you know, for example, that we're going to get to that in a second, your pre-event work. But again, the entire focus of this specific method 
is planning out not only what the goal is, but step by step, how we're achieving it, how others are going to help us achieve it, and then keeping yourself to these time bound goals. So, example outline, you all have it in front of you, but just for those who have it. So, all right, aim. As it says, we're going to aim high. This is your SMART goal. Uh, it, in the traditional lesson plan, this is framed as students will be able to, or SWBAT, for those who like the, oh. that hippie thing. We're going to change that up and have this be, judges will be able to, because this may be a goal for yourself. It may also be a goal, like say you're leading a team and you want everyone on your team to achieve this goal. That way you're doing a little more of the teaching and this becomes more of an actual lesson, but I'd like to think that this can be framed and so we're going to brainstorm a goal. We're going to brainstorm an aim. What's, it, what's something that people want to accomplish? Level two. Level two. Great example. I was going to write this up here so we don't. Level Is this a smart goal? Yes. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Good answer. All right. What are we missing? Time frame. Time frame. We're seeing a time frame. Throw out a time frame. Anyone? Eight, eight months. months. All right. Eight months. Eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, an hour is time down. I don't know how realistic that is. So we're still not at a smart goal point yet. Depends on how much of your checklist is accomplished. <laughs> so, so something that's, uh, that's critical to keep in mind for this specific method is sometimes not every section of this will apply. Uh, so, but for example, for this next one, assessment. We want to make sure that you have a way to demonstrate that you've achieved your goal. This may be, in this case, passing the level two exam and interview. It could be performing a deck check in X amount of minutes, writing X number of reviews. It could be just about anything, but you want to make sure that whatever your assessment method is, is that's tangible and that's achievable. It's something that you can look at and say, I've done this. So for assessment, fairly straightforward. Sorry, my handwriting is atrocious. For this one, we want to pass the level two. All right, so the thing is, uh, say you're in a traditional classroom setting. A lot of times, I'm sure everyone's familiar with this, you come into the classroom, and your teacher would have something for you to do before the class began. Right. In the education world, it's pretty simple. It's a warm up. This is a do now. What where we're going to equate this is pre-event work or your setup at the event. This is an exercise to get you focused on the aim. So a lot of times, what we'll see in any goal is you can have this goal and you can come in with it and have something you want to achieve. But if you don't prepare ahead of time, you're going to be a lot less likely to actually achieve that. So, for example, if you're team leading, coming up with team building activities, something like that, knowing where uh, your weaknesses lie in the scope of this goal. Uh, it could be if you're wanting a deck check, reading articles about ways to do it better, or talking to your mentor about ways that you can improve outside of the event or come in with the right mentality in order to succeed. So, for our L2 aim, what do we think a good warm-up activity is? What's a good warm-up? Practice, practice live calls. calls. So, sorry, practice live calls. I heard what else? L2 practice. practice. Sorry? The L2 practice. L2 practice. That, or a hard practice or a policy practice. Probably yeah. more of a warm-up than the L2 practice. I, I think that's a better yeah. application. So policy practice. So, yeah, so uh, practice tests. Reading the IP. <laughs> so you're saying you want to see the practice. <laughs> no, on L2, <laughs> reading the IP here. Yep. Do we have to practice asses like it says next to pass L2 in there? <laughs> <laughs> There's two S's at the end of that word. E S S E S S. Yep. I, it says. It says asses. Ugly. <laughs> 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 
get better. I better. feel thoroughly prepared. <laughs> There's something about the level two exam you're not telling us? <laughs> yeah. That'll be our panel interview. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so now that we've come up with our with our practice material, it's, uh, for this specific thing, we're going to stuck to non not the L two P uh, because the the L two P I think is more uh, applicable in our guided practice, which is we'll get to in just a second. But uh, so we've come up with something that we can do on our own to prepare for to to help us achieve our goal. Next one's introduction of new material. In a traditional lesson, this would be I'm going to tell you something you don't know yet, or broach a new subject or something of that nature. This one, it, it we've equated it to be what do I want to learn? What can help me achieve <coughs> my goal? So before we even do that, in the context of our L, of our goal of passing the L2 exam, we need to know what we don't know, right? So this portion needs to be the specific skills that you want to learn or what you need to improve upon. So let's shout it out. What do we think is something specifically that uh, uh, we collectively as uh, people need to work on for passing the L2 exam? Steps of casting a spell. Steps of casting a spell. Layers. 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 <laughs> Layers. Let's go. Layers. Layers is a big one. It's one we hear a lot. Uh, something else might be just like generic policy is one we hear a lot. It might be, uh, might even be leadership. It might be event logistics. It might be any number of things. But for the time being, a sip with layers. So uh, again, this section might not apply ahead of the event if we're looking to improve skills that we have already. But if you're unsure, this is a great space to brainstorm ideas about what could help you get to your goal. Now that we've got it, we've got guided practice. Again, in a traditional lesson, this would most likely be the teacher walking you through something. And we can apply the same thing here. Who can help me? Seriously, it, let's, let's take this. Who can help me get to L2? Anyone. 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 Let's. It's a little broader. So, so let's see. You yes. Hi. <laughs> the judge who certified you for L1. The judge who certified you for L1. Presumably, they're in L2. <laughs> 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 the, the person you're looking to test with. The L3 that you're looking to test. Absolutely. The person you're looking to test. So yeah. Your fellow L2s. Your fellow L2s. I mean, uh, any of the study uh, groups, either the ones on Facebook. Yeah, online the There's, a couple, there's a couple on Tumblr now. Rusty. Uh, local stores. Local stores. Other people who are taking the test as well that you want to study. Yeah, well. your your peers. That's a good one. <laughs> yes. Right. Uh, you're, you're taking the. Yeah. I'm being obnoxious. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. But, I helped. So, I pointed it out to him. Great. <laughs> By yeah. Uh, ask your RC. They will know someone. Yes, your regional coordinator can put you in contact with just about anyone. Hopefully, if you're an L1 going for L2, you have a mentor, right? Someone who you can just talk to about all, all of this and more. So when, when, we're, when we're going for L2, what questions can I ask this person? How, how can I help this person help me? Yes. Uh, the, the thing that I'm doing currently in my L2 process is that I asked the person who's mentoring me to give them, an, uh, for them to give me an honest assessment of my abilities. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. if I don't know where I'm at, then we don't know where we need to go. Yeah, especially because a goal like achieve L2, this is very specific, but it encompasses a lot, right? This is a very broad goal. There's any number of things that might be precluding me from getting there, but that's also why we set this time frame. That's, I have this amount of time to work on this and get there. Yes, I'm sorry, what's your name? Nick is my name. Nick. You may or may not get to this in the future. I, I don't sure. Know. So when you're doing for your aim and assess, um, pass L2, but how specific do you want, do you want it to be at least a little bit broad for your aim? It can literally or be, do you as want it, can it be as broad as narrow as you want. Okay. There, there is, there, if we go back to our SMART goal, uh, we do want it to be specific. We do. As, as specific is up to you, because this could be something like, I want to do a deck check in, in three minutes, or five minutes, or whatever you want. Or it could be something more like, make L2. It's really just, we want it 
to achieve as many of these as possible, and preferably all of them. But uh, however you choose to break it down is going to be what matters. Setting the goal, it, it, this is something that I was going to touch on anyway. Setting the goal is easy, right? Setting the goal is the easy part. If I say, I want to be L2 in the next eight months, that's really easy to say. It's really easy to say. But if we don't go through and we don't plan out how we're going to do it, then it becomes a lot more difficult, which is why, why I came up with this. Because I definitely had that problem where I'd set a goal and be like, oh yeah, I was supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if, you, if you break it down and you give yourself objectives, then it becomes a lot easier. So we were on uh, guided practice. Guided practice. Guided practice. Guided practice. Guided practice. All right, so let's say that you're working with your mentor to achieve L2. We want to talk to that person as much as possible, right? Like, seriously, just as much as we can over the course of the time that we are receiving this information, up until uh, the test. But what's really important is that we also want to observe what this person's doing. Like, chances are, if you're talking to this person about your, about your mentor, about going for L2, like, they're, they're either an L2 with the L2 tester certification or they're an L3. They know what you should be doing. So we want to, you want to observe them and take notes and see what they do, and then question everything about it, right? You, wanna, you, want, you don't just want to know how they, how they do what they do, you want to know why they're doing it. So like, this could actually be anything. Let's use the deck check example. If you see one person who seems to be doing everything very quickly, they, they've got to have a method to doing that. They're not just randomly pulling cards out and flinging them all over the place and then they're done. <laughs> yeah. That's not that. <laughs> yeah, but, but the point is that this whole portion and this portion of it is to get you to work with other people. Because none, I guarantee you that no goal that you set will be done better by yourself than it will be if someone's helping you. That's why it's the lesson plan. Someone's going to teach you something. At an event, this could be your team lead or your head coach. Let's say, uh, let's let's go further. Let's say you want the team lead certification for day two of a Grand Prix. You're going to work day one of a Grand Prix, right? You're, you're going to be working day one. You're going to have seen other events. You want to observe what this person's doing. Everyone's got something to teach you, so you want to make sure that you reach ahead ahead to them. You want to make sure you reach out, say, "Hey, I'm going to go do this." I want to learn as much as I can about it ahead of time so I'm most prepared when I do. And of course, that's the next step. Doing it. So, we have our guided practice. And also, this, for this particular goal, your mentor, yeah. <laughs> not fresh, not fresh, fresh talk part. anymore. <laughs> yeah, he's more a good sign. Yeah, I'm not more shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 falls apart by seeing. Like, yeah. uh, so that part, I think, would be where your L two P comes in. It's part of the mentor part, because what you should be doing, uh, again, no one achieves anything alone. Is you should be the, whoever is issuing you this L two P. Hopefully, you have someone to issue it to you. You should be going over the results. You should be seeing again. What do I need to work on? What what can I do better? What what do, what am I great at? What do I not need to devote more time to before I achieve my goal? Because it goes both ways. So for the independent practice, it's time to do it. Right? You want to use your knowledge that you've accumulated through your introduction of new material throughout your plan, and you need to become whatever your goal is. This is really uh, a work into your assessment. This is putting your assessment into motion. So a lot of times you might hear someone for our golfer make meal two say, uh, you know, two is a really a thing that you are. It's not something that you achieve, right? You can pass an L2 exam, but people will give you the L2 exam if they believe that you are already at a point where you're for you, this might mean mentoring other judges. This might mean uh, getting difficult rule scenarios that you might not have otherwise thought before. But the most important thing is that you try to do it yourself. You might fail, and that's completely fine. And that's why you've got your mentor there to observe and give you feedback. 
because if you don't try to do it yourself, then we won't know whether or not the assessment is true. That's really what it ends up being. Is the independent practice portion is meant to get you to the place where you can assess yourself. For the independent practice, like, look, I, I skipped ahead a little bit. I was gonna ask you what you guys thought the independent practice was for BNL2 first, but I kinda got a little ahead of myself. Cheats me. Cheats, cheats me, sorry. But yeah, but let's, let's pretend I hadn't said that. Who would have said that the independent practice portion of passing, of uh, becoming L2 was passing the L2 exam? So you sneak into an event, pretend to be a level two. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but that's my thing, is like, the independent practice, in this particular case, I don't think it's passing the L2. I don't think that's the practice. The practice is performing in the capabilities of an L2. Right, this might be uh, at a PPTQ. I know a lot of places, including uh, the Boston area, is a program where we let uh, people who are about to be L1s basically run a PPTQ. You know, with an L2 there, stuff like that. It's showing that you can perform and that you can perform the duties of the position that you want. All right, so, sorry if that got a little rambling. Are there any questions so far? I'm sorry, I've been going a little quick. No? Don't for me easy to digest. <laughs> I'm glad. So the last thing on your sheet and the last thing in the plan is your closing or your exit ticket. Uh, you might have had this in school, you know, do, do a little wrap up and something to hand in before you leave. This part is especially important because it refers <coughs> back to everything else. Because we don't want your assessment and your aim to be the end. Because that, you won't have learned anything. You might have at the end of it, but if you don't refer and you're not constantly checking to see if your goals have been met, then you need, you need to do that. So you need to check in. This could be a person, this could be uh, your mentor, or a review, or anything, or it could just be your lesson plan sheet. You wanna ask yourself, was your goal achieved? In this case, it's pretty easy to figure out whether or not our goal was achieved, you know, am I an L2? <laughs> but let's say we don't pass the first time. What can I do better? What, what can I prepare to do better next time? What, what helped me get to the point where I am now? Because you should be closer than when you started. What difficulties were there? Where is my mentor not always available? Did I get some bad info? Was my study pattern not quite what I wanted it to be? Go back and critique everything that got you to this process, which should hopefully be in your notes that you've been keeping the whole time. <coughs> and finally, critique your lesson plan. Because your aim might have been great, your assessment might have been successful, but this, what I've found in creating this is that this is never finished, which is great. There's always something that you can plan for a little better, resources that you might not have been using to their fullest potential, and you can go back and critique what got you there, and then use that in order to plan your next one. Because there should be a next one. We're not done. We're never done. So, really, that's it as far as the sheet goes. But I'd really like to hear everyone's thoughts on this because this is still very much a work in progress. And I want to know how you think this could either help or yeah, in the future. Yeah. Um, this is like all of my head going off. As someone who just graduated from college, someone who's you know been a student who's been, been in the environment where teaching moments is very pivotal. I think you have to be the advocate of your own success if you want to get to your goal. Um, Absolutely. And definitely find an educator who sometimes, for me, like I have a disability that sometimes one teaching method won't work, but different methods will. So you just have to find that method that works best for you. Yeah. I think that part of, and just, I have a different thought, but just to touch on that, I think that's why talking to a mentor or talking to the study buddies or whoever you are working with towards this lesson plan is really important because let's say your study group says, uh, makes a chart for like layers in a little booklet or something, and that's helping everybody in the group but you, hypothetically speaking. Like you need to let your group know like, hey guys, can we think of something else? Can you guys help me come up with something that'll work for me too? 
don't like you, because that's something that happened to me with a study group I was working with. Things were working for them, and instead of saying to them, hey, this kind of study method isn't working for me, I just kind of tried to make it work, and it wasn't. It's so like, as Elliot had pointed out, you have to be, you have to be uh, comfortable enough to talk to whoever you are working with, whether it's a mentor, a friend, whatever, towards that goal. Uh, I think with the independent practice, I think uh, setting up small, uh, and I don't know if this makes it too too involved, but setting up micro goals for independent practice. Yeah. Because uh, like one of the things that's been helping me is I now keep a planner. So I organize what I'm doing on specific days towards my L2 goal, whether it's a day off, and just being like, Tuesday is my day where I just don't look at anything. I just veg out. Wednesday is layers, you know, Thursday is combat. Like, finding a way, uh, making sure that you're not just saying, oh, well, I'm working towards passing the L2P, try to break that down a little bit more. Because the L2P is a pretty involved test. Yeah. With a lot of things in it. Um, I just want to kind of add on to that kind of like micro goal <laughs> thing. Um, at my company, we do this thing called a quarterly check-in. Yeah. Where you set your SMART goal. <laughs> And then you have to set um, kind of smart measures to that goal. So how am I, step by step, how am I going to meet that goal? Yeah. And then every quarter, you revisit your measures. And you say, all right, do I really need to do this anymore? Or how far along am I in this? And then you roll that up to see, you know, am I 50% done with this? Am I really on track to meet that? If not, how am I going to mitigate that? How am I going to yeah. catch up? Um, so really, the measures are the most important part of that. So if you take L2 and you break that down and you're constantly revisiting it <coughs> and challenging it and saying, okay, I need to study for this test. And then you say, okay, what did I have to do to study? You know, um, you're really doing the smart goal and you're breaking that down in a way that makes sense for you to learn. Yeah. I learned, I kind of learned something similar to this when I was uh, an editor in chief of a website that like this system was pretty helpful in like getting the writers on task. So. Yeah, just to even break that down more, it's about breaking it down yeah. as much as you can. I think that putting something uh, as big as just, I want to be level two in eight months as your aim, is almost counterproductive because there are so many like milestones to hit. You know, you have to judge a certain amount of GPs, you have to be, you know, do a certain amount of events that you had judged. You like, you have so many of those things and those are all aims in and of themselves like you have to do so much to get those done and i think that when it comes to being specific yes you should be as specific as you want to be but if, if you want to be successful i've found that keeping organized with every single step of the process writing everything down like this is one of those things that at worst is a great way to organize your thoughts and at best is an actual roadmap to getting to where you want to be so the, the more specific you can be, the better. So that means like 12 aim goals to get to one big aim goal, exactly what these guys are saying. I think that you Exactly, like this is definitely on the broader spectrum of something that this can help you achieve. Uh, but, yeah. but, with, but with coming off of that, not personal or anything like that, like I can't learn that way. Like I can't, I need something huge in front of me, like, okay, here's an eight, I need an eight month thing in front of me, and I will figure out the steps along the way. Like, I have two judge mentors on my L2 Quest 2017, as I broadly call it, and it's, it was 2016 before, but we were <laughs> 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 the championship had some, had some <laughs> Look, there are str struggle bus through struggle cities, I'll tell you, but it's, it's, there's a big broad space in between, and like, I have two mentors for the sheer fact of that, like one would sit here and say during this presentation, like stop make fun, making fun of Elliot Rapp in his presentation. And the other one would be like, that was a pretty good job making fun of Elliot in the presentation. <laughs> it's like a carrot and stick kind of thing. So if I'm, they, like, I'm led to a certain point and then it's a point where, like, okay, I've been led here and I can't get forward, you're getting pushed by somebody else. So yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of a big pinball effect and it doesn't work for everybody. And really the, the great thing about <laughs> this is it's very open which I think allows people to adapt it for ways that work best for them. I'm not saying that this is a perfect lesson plan, because it's definitely not. But at the same time, if this works for you, if the broad strokes work for you, you can have lesson plans within lesson plans, and it'd still be great. It's just, if say, L2 is my, my primary goal in eight months, and I've got that, and then I need to break that down into, I want to learn all of the layers by this date, and this is how. 
It's really just about breaking things down and holding yourself to an accountable, measurable standard. So like, how does this look for a goal that's a little a little different than something broad like that? Like, like, uh, like my goal is like I want to have work, I want to I want to have worked on every possible GPT team by like on the let's say by like two sessions now. Sure. Or or something like I want to write one review for every GP I do for next year. Like that. What is what is what is the lesson plan look like there? So something like for something specific. like um, so let's let's take your first one. I want to have worked on every GP team by two sets from now. Uh, so first of all, we need to know how many is that actually? Right. How many have you worked on already? What, <coughs> what can we do that for? And then we need to be like, okay, how can I achieve that? I can message the judge manager. I can learn everything I need to do about doing this task so that when the time comes, I know what questions to ask my team lead so I can do it well. I can talk to, um, I can ask to get reviewed by my mentor on my progress in each individual team. Uh, so it, it's more just like, it, for, for goals like that, where it mainly comes down to asking for what you want, just being on the team, but even then, it's, I'm gonna make sure that they really know that I wanna work with this team on this event. Or talk to the RC and be like, hey, I'm not getting onto as many GPs as I want. As I want you to meet this goal. Is there anything that I could do to improve my application and stuff like that? Yes. Uh, and uh, Tom, in Tom Davis's seminar today, he does also he talked about like uh, understanding that you did the best that you can. If you set like a goal like that, let's say by 2018, you want to be you want to have said that I've worked every GP. GP team possible, and you get to the end of 2018, and you've done, let's say there are five teams, and you've done three of the five. You have to, if you've been, if you've been following the lesson plan, and you know, talking to your RC, talking to judge managers, so on and so forth, and you don't achieve it, you, there comes a point where you have to kind of accept the reality that there's only so much you can do. Like, if I had made a goal to work one event a month one year, and at some point, that just was not possible. I wrote to a bunch of the realistic. Realistic. Mm -hmm. like, like, I don't know, that probably wasn't a very realistic goal at the time. But like, I had to accept at some point, after I missed two months of doing events, that like I was, as long as I kept putting in the footwork, I shouldn't be upset. Because I'm still following all the things that I need to do. And I was learning a ton from being rejected. Yeah, the, the thing is that with a lot of these goals, like, they're not always going to be achieved in the time that they set. It, it's just a fact of life that, you know, we, things can't work out perfectly all the time. But the thing is, if you break your goals down and if you do as much as you can and you can identify, okay, what about that aim wasn't realistic? And if it was realistic, what about this went wrong that I could control for next time? Rick, you had your hand up? I was just going to twist the goal and say that instead of trying to work every GP by X, right? Yeah. If you look at it and say, I want to be on the logistics on my next GP, and you have that documented, then you know what to ask for, right? It may not be quite as formulated as, you know, timely and some of that, because you don't know, some, there, there's some variable there that we don't know. But if you've actually at least documented that goal, and you share that goal, you're going to get there when you finally have the opportunity to do it. Right? When you once once you are back in control of that thing. And I, I think that kind of goes back to a couple of people mentioned this before about that re some goal some goals like the like the aim that we have here, making L2, a lot of that can be broken down into smaller lesson plans. This is probably something where you can make something on more in order of what would be a unit plan. Right. Where like you have several different things that you want to achieve, and each one of those has a lesson, and each one of those might even have sub, -le sub uh, lessons, <coughs> like sub lessons in those, for example. Yep. Very true. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna keep doing this. Um, so, what you're feeling on net, like um, what would be perceived as negative goals, like like I've seen goals in the aspect of they come off as negative as saying you make a goal saying like I will not break down in tears at one of my next six GPs or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was just demonstrably well, that, that, I thought you were talking about like, Providence was really hard, okay? It, it, like, <laughs> like, no, no, that, that's, 
that's completely yeah. reasonable. But is it is it re is it? Well, I guess my question is without being ridiculous yeah. is is that something we should strive to stay away from of making a goal that is perceived as negative? Um. Well, first of all, I would argue that the goal is what you perceive. I, I'm not going to judge what your goal is as long as it is smart. Like, if if your goal is to not get stressed out at, at the GV, then, like, no, th that's a very real thing. That's, that's absolutely very real. And so, like, I, like, I'll be the first to admit, that's legitimately been a goal of mine at times. Like, and not not that specific thing, but controlling your emotions during during the during a large event. And so, what you have to do in that situation is obviously that's a lot more in perspective. But it, but it can still carry a lot of the same sub goals. Like you can talk to your team lead and be like, "Hey, this is this is a thing that I've observed about myself that I want you to be aware of. I might have to leave the floor, get some water, or get some food, but." This is a thing that I've observed about myself. If you could help me out with that in any way you can, just be aware, then that would help me immensely. Stuff like that. It's like we want to make sure that in, as many people who can help you are aware of it <coughs> as possible because every single person who you meet at one of these events is going to want to help you. And it makes it so much easier if you tell them what, what we can do. I mean, just from like a similar perspective, I have a really bad knee. And at first I did not, t and Elliot knows about this, at first I didn't tell anybody that I was working with that I had a bad knee. And I was getting reviews about like, hey, I've noticed that you sit down a lot at events. <laughs> and I was so like, funny. and I was, and it, because it looks bad if like you constantly see a judge that's just always sitting down and not walking on the floor. And I was like, oh, I probably should tell people that like I tore my ACL in high school. And so like walking on concrete floors like all day is not good for me. And like, like Ellie was saying, like if you tell people like, hey, uh, like I have a bad knee, is there any way I can like take micro break breaks, or do you mind if like I sit and observe matches as opposed to stand and observe matches? I've yet to have a team lead tell me no, that's unacceptable. Yeah, and like, like quite literally, everyone who you encounter at a GP wants to help you. They they might not be able to in that specific terms, but they can at least point you to the person who can. And also, uh, if you are applying for a larger event, hi Rick. Um, <laughs> then then Wait, listing that kind of thing in your cover letter and making sure that that information is there up front is very important. Because it also means, hey, I know enough about myself to the point where I know you care about this. And if your team lead decides to try to pull something and you go back to me as a judge manager who knew about it from the beginning, I can solve the problem. <laughs> yeah. You walk over to me on Sunday and say, you know, I've had this knee problem for years. I'm really tired today. Can I sit down? And I go, <laughs> what do you mean, knee problem? <laughs> Are you just trying to angle so you can sit down all day? <laughs> then we start asking different questions and having been able to go into it the whole weekend knowing of an accommodation that we'll be able to give. Yeah. Well, I think so much of it is going into something knowing what your options are, or at least making that one of your goals is to find out what options are available to you. So like you can talk about that with a mentor, or you can, uh, whatever the hell this is. So I'm gonna be completely honest, this is my favorite slide. This, this is my favorite step. Um, because, like, I, I will, <coughs> preparation is something that I feel is drastically underrepresented in the program, where we can go into a day and a lot of people, especially once they've gotten a bit of experience under their belt, will just rely on that experience. If, this is what, like, this slide is actually pretty much what inspired this entire thing, which is that preparation is so, so, so important. And if you take an hour, like literally just an hour before, uh, the night before an event and plan and say, hey, I know I've got this goal for the event. Okay, what am I going <coughs> to do to achieve it and communicate that in the morning? Then you're going to have a much better event because not only are you going to know what you want out of the event, everyone else is going to know too. And they're going to help you as best as they can. That's what this entire thing is about, is, pre is setting your goal and preparing you for the outcome. That might, you might succeed, you might not, but you will have gained that knowledge and that foresight to anticipate what you can do for next time. 10 minute warning. Thank you. Um, I, this is part commentary, but partially I wanna get your thoughts on this. Um, 
as a, as a teacher candidate, having done a few lesson plans already in, uh, in my grad school career, um, a, lot, a lot of, so the format like that this is laid out in is a little different from the format in which like we were, at least I was instructed, it presented with how to lay it, how to organize a lesson plan, like starting with the aim, starting with the goal, obviously we want to start there, and then moving into an assessment, how am I going to measure where I, where, whether I achieve that goal or not, but then the rest of the steps, like part of it was, part of what I learned was like starting with the content and moving into, starting in like the middle and kind of working your way backward to the warm up activity. So you have your activity before you do, all right, how am I gonna introduce myself into this? And, and there's an argument for both ways, but I guess my question is like, what are your thoughts on doing at least like some of, like I would think that doing some of these out of order, like you don't necessarily have to start with Yeah, the, this is up. not, sorry, I should have said that to begin. Uh, mm -hmm. This is not meant to be done it as presented directly in order. Uh, the first two things should be done first because they inform the rest of it, but I actually learned the exact same way. Mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily that you want to follow this in order every time. It's that you need to let your aim and your assessment inform the rest of it. So, for example, um, your aim is level two in eight months. I would argue that your guided practice is probably the most informative part <coughs> of what this is because it's the person who can influence your process the most. Uh, but yeah, what you what what Matt was saying is absolutely right. You the the introduction and of new material and the guided practice are likely going to work back to your preparation. And that's why we do the prep is to get this idea into your head and prepare you for the rest of the day. So you can reference it later. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Um, I know it's about the idea, but I'm pretty sure this isn't necessarily limited to judging, right? Like I, I can see setting a goal no, of like, I want to get to grad school, or I want to cash the next modern PPP, or no, modern no, PPP. No goals other than judgments. <laughs> 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 it's not a judgment. we are judging each other, so we just need to change it out. <laughs> no, this is completely <laughs> applicable to whatever, whatever goal or aim. Uh, I just decided to present it in this context because we're at a judge conference, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hashtag. Yes. yes. So this is completely not judge specific. Are there any other questions, comments, anything like that? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, in that case, thank you so much. If you do decide to do this, please let me know how it goes, because I really want to continue developing this career. You're going to share the, this to yes, us, right? Yes, the PowerPoint. I'm going to put a few right. more points in it now that we've had this discussion. Okay. And this outline will be available for you, and the link will be in. Remember to fill out the feedback form.